piece. Um, and uh, show you how to, how to mix colors for a multi-color print. And so, let, let's say I wanted to mix kind of a light baby blue here, right? So I just kind of, I could squeeze some of this uh, blue out. Again, always release, always release the pressure on the back of this and back up our, uh, uh, the arm on this thing or else it's gonna get really, really uh, messy. At the end of this, you can see the blobs of ink that have squirted out from where somebody didn't do that before. And so if I just mix this ink up now, and you always want to warm your ink up, so you want to kind of mix it around a little bit and see if you can uh, get it to uh, warm up and be kind of nice and loose and everything. Um, if I want to, I can add some modifiers to this ink. I can just print it. And so, you know, they say about using colors right out of the tube. Never the greatest idea, but if I wanted to test my color, this is a lot like the way we test color with, with screen printing, is we'll just take this and we'll do what we call a drawdown, right? So we'll take our um, a little card, we'll put our color up here at the top, kind of a little bead of it, and then we'll just, um, we'll just pull, and that gives me a sense of what what my color looks like. And so if I'm not particularly satisfied with that color, I don't like that, uh, draw it out, which I don't really like that color very much. I'm going to go ahead and uh, add some white to it now, just to make sure that I get, um, you know, a little bit more um, kind of light blue that I'm looking for here. So what I'll do is I'll, the white is contained in this little container. And it's because the white is so runny that it runs like mad all over the place. So I don't like to use it. And I'm just going to use this one of these little tiny palette knives because I don't need very much white. And the last thing you want to do is take like say this blue one and not clean it and dunk it into the white to pull the white out of there, right? Because then the white has like a blue tint to it and if somebody needs a different tint in there, they're going to be upset. So please be mindful of everybody else. I'll just take a dab of the white, um, make sure that I close this lid up really good and tight to make sure it's snapped down on there. Don't drip all over the edges. If I do, I'll wipe that off and then I'll put the white back up uh, on the shelf where it goes. So now I can just add a little bit more, a little white into this thing and see how it works and I'll add just a couple of drops of uh, burnt plate oil to it too just to see how that changes the consistency of it. And different colors of ink in etching print differently, right? So we have um, some ink that will print real opaque, uh, some ink that prints real transparent. You just kind of have to play with it and see what happens, uh, see what you like. But the um, White is the one thing to know about white is if you just try to print a pure white with an etching plate, the oxidization, so that copper, is going to change the color of your white and you're going to end up with gray. <laughs> like it never really prints a nice clear white off of a copper plate, especially the more you rub, rub it around and do a bunch of um, uh, sort of different kinds of like, uh, you know, if you're really wiping the plate, the more you rub that around on the copper, the grayer that gets. So oftentimes people get to be a little bummed about that. Yellow is a little tricky that way too. It often turns green, so the copper plate will oxidize with the yellow. So maybe a stencil might be a better way to get white onto a plate, or actually some people who really want to print white will coat their etching plate after they've etched it, so after they put the lines on there. They'll coat it with floor wax and then they'll print that. So lots of different kind of ways and tricks to try to use to get it. But you can see this is a much lighter blue now, right? So I'm going to go ahead and take a little dab of this. Put it on here. And we'll do the drawdown and we'll see what the difference is between the two. Okay, so you can see the difference between the dark blue and the light blue. This light blue is much better. If I wanted to mix in some yellow, red, whatever colors I need to to change that color, I could do that. So it's better to experiment and do a bunch of drawdowns and see what your color, uh, what you want your color to look like. I think you should definitely do that as opposed to, um, you know, printing it and then deciding, oh, I didn't like that color. Obviously, that's a lot of wasted effort. So that's color mixing um, using, uh, using the oil-based inks. Okay, so if I'm going to print this plate in the blue color I've made now, I just need to go ahead and card my colored ink on there just like I would uh, black. It's not any real different. Um, again, I like to use a newsprint underneath my plate to make sure that it doesn't get all over the place. But um, pretty simple. You just put this on there, card it on there, and then, you know, with a hot plate on, it'll kind of loosen the ink up. And then you want to card as much of the ink off as you can. It just makes it a little easier to wipe. So I like to try to pull as 
much and you can put the card off of there as I can. And you want to be careful you're not scratching up your plate, so you want to try to make sure that you know you don't have any stray pieces of like shards of copper or something like that in there. Make sure that the plate's good and clean. And if you see a scratch, uh, stop. <laughs> All right, so I've got that set. Now I just need to wipe it in color. And so all of our color tarlatans are under here. And so, you know, here I have my blue um, tarlatan. So I'm going to use like one of the darker blue tarlatans that's uh, a little bit more dirty. And I'm going to start with the dirtiest part of that tarlatan. And I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this plate just like I would um, a black, uh, you know, a black inked up plate in black. And I'm just going to go ahead and move the ink around on there without pushing down hard, just like I did with the black ink, and I'm gonna slowly wipe this plate up and eventually I'll have it all polished up and ready to run through the press, just like I did with the uh, wiping up a black, uh, black plate. So, um, this is printing in color. You know, you wanna print your, you wanna wipe up your black plate and your blue plate in this case. Um, again, you can print it in any color you want, it doesn't have to be blue, but um, you wanna wipe these, the, both those plates up at the same time. So you want to have the black one ready to go and then the blue one ready to go and then we'll run them through the press both at the exact same time and you'll see how those two things print. Okay, so printing plates and registration for Intaglio. Um, I went ahead and inked up my black plate. So I ran that plate through first. I've got the, um, uh, um, I went ahead and put some registration marks on it before I ran it through. I'm going to go ahead and take it off now. So I don't need tape for this necessarily, but one thing you want to make sure you do is if you haven't done this yet, Make sure you put your registration marks on those crosshairs on the back of your piece of paper real carefully so that you know where to put the paper down. And I like to actually put a little arrow that tells me which way it went through um, and which way is up. Sometimes that helps a lot too. So just real lightly on the back, I can always erase it off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and peel my uh, wet piece of paper off of here and you can see the plate underneath. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've, I've printed that first color on there. So the trick now is how do I get these two plates to, to print in perfect registration, the black and the blue one. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I clean off the registration matrix. And this is one thing you want to make sure you do or else these little like inky spots over here are going to end up gwishing out. So you want to make sure that you take some extra time, um, don't be in too big of a rush, and just kind of um, clean this thing off so that you've got a good amount of um, yeah, so that way it's ready. So I'm going to turn it over and run it back through the press the other way. This is more superstitious than anything for me, but I like to think that the paper might stretch one direction a little bit more than the other. So I'll pull this back so you all can see it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put my plate in so that it's going the same direction uh, that it was before. And I'm going to line this plate up exactly as exactly as I can inside my little green um, box here for my registration, right? So I've got that in there. And if the plates are the same size and I transferred the images carefully, everything ought to be in good register. So I try to go through and make sure I'm not leaving any weird marks on the edges. This is where you'll get little problems with uh, craftsmanship. And then to make sure that, always make sure that you're putting it down the right way. You don't want it flipped, right? Because then you'll print it upside down. Everybody does that at least once, but you want to try to avoid it. And then real carefully, without smearing a lot of ink around, I'm going to look for my crosshairs here, and I'm kind of holding this paper in tension. And I'm going to line it up so that all four of my crosshairs hit exactly. And this is where you can't be too like, precise. You can't get too OCD about this. You really need to make sure that you are paying attention to the details. So if I get all four of these registration marks all lined up, um, I know that this paper is going to go down right over the top of where the black marks are and the blue paper, the blue ink is going to print and it's going to offset off onto my paper and I'm going to have the black and the blue um, parts of this print perfectly aligned and then happiness will ensue, we'll have a great you know, day, everybody will be all excited about the stuff you learned in printmaking. When it doesn't all line up, then it tends to get a little bit sad. You know, upset, but it's all practice. Remember, it's just going to take some time. If you're stuck, if you can't figure out what you did wrong, make sure you find me and I'll try and walk you through this thing. It can be really complicated, but again, the idea is you carefully transfer one image from the black plate onto the blank blue plate, work on the aqua tint and all the other stuff that you want to do, and then um, 
and hopefully those two plates will be able to be printed in perfect register. So I'll print this thing out and we'll see. So I've run my black plate through, then I've switched them over and I've run the blue plate through. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these up here, kind of try and get them out of the way so we can see what happened. <clears throat> So the first thing you want to do is just peel your newsprint off and then check to make sure your registration marks are still there. So if, if like this is slipped down and all of a sudden my pencil line is way below this, I'm going to know that it shifted somehow as it went through the press and so it's not going to be in register. And that means as I put the felts down or something like that, it must have gotten all like mangled up. And so you want to make sure that you don't, uh, that, you don't that that doesn't happen. You've got to be really careful when you put your paper down in the newsprint and then the felts over the top that you're not shifting everything around, but hopefully the wet paper and all that stuff will kind of hold it through. So let's see what we got here. I'm just going to carefully peel this up and see how it looks. So again, I've got the blue printed together with the black. And so, uh, you know, now I can see kind of what's happened and where things are. And it looks like it's in pretty good register. Like, um, you know, all the little aqua tent places that I had here, um, lined up with the lines that I have. And, uh, so, um, I'll take a picture of this in a high resolution one and post with the video, but you can kind of see that we've got kind of everything in register and everything is set. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and put this pa paper um, underneath the weight. So I want to go ahead and put it underneath the weight over here, those, the boards with a piece of newsprint on top of it and let it dry overnight. And then it should be set and ready and I can, um, you know, go to, um, go to sign and number it. So depending on how many of them I make.